Hello everyone, Ben the Bar Guy back with another video to help you make better drinks. And today we're gonna do the Manhattan and the Martini right next to each other because they're very similar in terms of how we make them. But I'm gonna show you some subtle differences, some technique. If you like what you see, get yourself a drink, watch the video, and let's make better drinks. So the Manhattan and the Martini at the same time. Let's start with the Martini's history. The history of the Martini is a relatively newer drink in terms of the classical cocktails. It turns out that it didn't really pop up until the 1900s. And now when we're talking about a Martini, we're talking about two ounces of gin and one ounce of dry vermouth. There was the Martinez cocktail where they think the Martini may have come from that it contains sweet vermouth and a hint of curacao and or maraschino that was published by the Bon Vivant companion, Jerry Thomas's first cocktail book that was then reprinted in 1887. However, we don't see a dry vermouth version of the martini until the 1900s, maybe in 1904, the Marguerite cocktail is one that used dry vermouth and Plymouth gin and a touch of orange bitters. There's also the Knickerbocker version in 1911 or 1912 that may get credit for the martini. But in terms of a classic old school cocktail, this, this one didn't come along until a little bit later. Now the martini back then would have been wet as we call it. When someone says something is dry or wet, they are referring to specifically the amount of vermouth in the drink. A wet martini would be 50-50. In other words, 50% vermouth to 50% booze. A dry martini uh, in the early days, in other words, like 1920s, would have been two parts booze to one part vermouth. And that would have gone for the Manhattan or the martini or any of these stirred up drinks that use vermouth and, and booze and a little bit of bitters. So when we're talking about dry and wet, that's what we're referring to. So as the martini marches on in history, it gets drier and drier and drier. And we have a theory, a modern day theory, that I can't say that we've actually proved, but we think that it's because vermouth wasn't treated properly after World War II and it wasn't refrigerated. Vermouth is really a fortified wine and wine has to be fortified and or drunk relatively quickly. Now the fortification process means that your vermouth might last a little bit longer than a bottle of wine like your Chardonnay left out, but it's not gonna last weeks and weeks and weeks months and months and months. So if they kept vermouth on the back bar or kept vermouth in a warm place, it was not properly treated. And we think that the loss of the skill that a bartender had after prohibition, where they would have known that, caused vermouth to be kind of treated like a redheaded stepchild. It just wasn't respected, wasn't kept properly chilled, wasn't used fast enough. And that led to martinis that tasted not as great. And so by the time you get to the 1940s, 50s, 60s, you have what's called the Winston Churchill martini, which is pour the gin, wave the vermouth over the glass, and serve. But historically, there would have been 50-50 martinis, or even uh, two to one, which is what we're making today. So the history of the Manhattan is a bit older. In the 1860s to 1880s, vermouth became quite popular in the United States, particularly New York, the Manhattan was reportedly made at a Jenny Jerome, which was also Winston Churchill's mother, party in New York, somewhere in the 1870s, in the mid 1870s. So the Manhattan has an older history, uh, although we're not surprised that gin got mixed with sweet vermouth in the Martinez right about the same time, about it, within a decade. That seems to make sense. But isn't it ironic that Winston Churchill's mother made probably a 50-50 Manhattan at her party or even a two-to-one Manhattan at her party when Winston never used vermouth in his martinis. I guess we all have various ways of drinking not like our parents. All right, so those are the histories of the two drinks. Now we're gonna go through making them. When you're making a martini in Manhattan, let's start with the glassware. First of all, you can certainly make it on, on a rock anytime you want. I think these drinks are fantastic on a rock. I would chill this glass, pour it down over this rock, even build on this rock if I put a big ice cube in here. And that's perfectly fine. But a great martini or Manhattan is really the bartender's expression of 
absolutely balancing your cocktail exactly how it should be with exactly the amount of water for the gin they're using, which is really a bartender's task. The genius of a bartender in front of you is that they can figure out exactly how much water should be added to the drink, along with the bitters, the, the actual gin they're using and what proof that is. That is the skill of the bartender. That's what makes them really good at what they do. The best of the best martinis and Manhattans I've ever had, where I'm really impressed, come in an up glass, or today I will show you a little trick. We have what we called ice martini glasses, and all they really are, are two, a glass and a glass that was probably for shrimp cocktail that we found at antique stores. And essentially what this will allow you to do is leave a little ice in here, just like a shrimp cocktail, and it will keep the glass chilled that the martini lives in. And so I will show you how to do that as well. So step one, if you're at home, is take one of these glasses and keep them in the freezer. This is our liquid nitrogen per usual. That'll chill our glass. But I will also put a touch of liquid nitrogen in our iced martini glass. In other words, the inside of this little guy, okay? And as those work, they're gonna start to chill. We don't wanna chill this guy too much because if we do, it'll get so cold that it'll freeze a lot of the ice to the bottom of this. So we're gonna get that out relatively quickly, as you notice, okay? Now, I don't know if you can hear that noise. You hear that noise? That means when it comes to liquid nitrogen that it's given the maximum amount of chill to the glass and now it's giving it to the air, which is why it makes noise, it's popping. Nice chill glass, really important to have a chill glass. Okay, th now that those are chilled, we have chilled stirring glasses that came out of the freezer. Very important. You really want a chill glassware for the Martini in Manhattan. It just gets it nice and cold, because we, we can only add so much water to these. What we do is we like to crack cubes like this into the ear. So these are freezing cold. The glasses are freezing cold and we crack like this, okay? Now what we're doing is we're hitting with a spoon that has a little heft to it and we're just hitting gently on top of the cube until it starts to crack. And it's a piece of cake to get cubes in here. Now I, just to speed things up, I've showed you how to crack these, but I have some ice already cracked, and we're gonna put that in here, a little extra, and we're gonna start with our vermouth. Why do we start with our vermouth? Well, if we happen to mismeasure, we would probably be able to start over without wasting much money. The vermouth is a little cheaper than the booze, generally speaking. So we start with vermouth, or what we call modifiers. We measure them first. So okay, let's start with the martini. We're gonna use one ounce of dry vermouth. In this case, we're using a French dry vermouth, which was classically, what they would have used. Uh, this is Dolan. It is an excellent dry vermouth, I think. We also are going to use a sweet vermouth for our Manhattan. One ounce of each, okay? Now, very importantly, we're gonna go to the bitters, okay? This is Angostura bitters. They are the classically used bitters uh, that we use all the time for uh, Manhattans, but also old fashions. And as I mentioned before, the original martini had just a touch of orange bitters. I like to use Regan's, but keep in mind, these orange bitters are pretty intense. I like to use just a touch less of these orange bitters than I did the Angostura bitters for the Manhattan. Okay, now we're on to our booze. We like to use gin for our, obviously our martini. There's no such thing as a vodka martini. I know that lots of people out there want to tell me that they got their vodka martini. Now, as a, as a bartender, when someone says that to me, it's perfectly fine. I'm just, it's their world, I'm just bartending in it. So they get to tell me a vodka martini. And I always check with people, gin or vodka. But as a bartender, I'm telling you right now, there's one martini, it's gin. Leave the vodka out. You can use vodka if you're James Bond, but if you're not, skip it. And that's one of the stories of James Bond. Ian Fleming, who wrote the James Bond novels, was paid to have James switch his taste from gin to vodka. So think about that, boo. The original martini is gin, not vodka. Sorry, James, come find me. I wear a bow tie, I ain't scared. Give a little rinse to the jigger. And we're using rye whiskey for our Manhattan. And it's very important that it's rye, I think, to stay true to the original recipe. There's Canadian rye. Canadian whiskey was largely rye, so it's important that you just use a rye of some sort, okay? Now, you can use bourbon if you really want, but if you're making the original, it, it's rye, okay? Now let's talk about stirring. When you're stirring, 
two fingers on one side, two on the other, maybe just the one. And then your thumb catches here, okay? And what you're doing is a push with these fingers, push, and then you're pulling with these fingers, okay? So push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. And it looks like you're going around the glass and you are keeping the spoon, the back of the spoon on the glass. But what you're doing is a push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Okay, and it makes it go around the glass. And the faster you stir, the better. And really fill this glass up with ice. The reason gives you a little more time to catch exactly how much water you want in this drink. And we want to add about one ounce to one ounce and a quarter. If you're using a rye like we're using, it's 90 proof, it's a little bit higher. You wanna add a little more water. If you're using a gin that's 88 proof, we're gonna add just a touch less water. Now I'm noticing my glass for the Manhattan. It's getting a little not cold. So I'm gonna add some more, add a little more liquid nitrogen to that. I'm gonna throw some more ice. Always keep your glass full, okay? Stir as fast as you can, all right? And if you can, learn to stir with two hands. If you learn how to practice, really straightforward. All right, and then you're gonna need two julep strainers. These are a julep strainer. We have links in the description to very nice ones. But before we get to straining, what we wanna do is taste, okay? Is this drink done? Ooh, it's good. The martini needs work. I was stirring the Manhattan in front of the camera, and I think it needs a bit more stirring. Now we're gonna put it into this glass right here, okay? Now this glass, we already chilled this. Now we're gonna fill this with ice. Now I shook a 10 earlier with kind of uh, our deli ice and kind of made this out of it. It's kind of a mushy ice. It's basically a crushed ice. I did it here, but if you had some way to make crushed ice, just shake up your ice cubes in your freezer and really get a crushed ice. Just make a little, made a little, a little dimple there that this can live on, but it kind of still sits in there, okay? You want it to sit as much as possible. If there's anything in there that is kind of preventing it, from sitting like that chunk was. Oh, there we go. That sits in there. That's what we want. There we go. Boom, all right? Now, the one drink that we kind of forced, were forced to touch the rim of is this drink with the ice martini glass. And it's unfortunate because we really don't like to touch the rim of anything. But in this one case, we make an exception because it makes such, such a great drink and we can't deny it, so we're gonna continue to do it. It's uh, unfortunate, but if you just touch underneath the rim where it's meant to grab, it's not the worst of insults to the person drinking it. And after you strain it, after you set it up, you don't have to touch it again, okay? Now let's taste one more time, see if this is done. Well, it needs a little bit more. It needs a, bit, a little bit more. And what am I looking for, right? I want everything to be balanced. The martini should taste like, ooh, this is done. It's fantastic. We're gonna get that Manhattan off the water. By the way, the person who trained me, Sasha Petrosky, could look across the bar at a training bartender pouring off a Manhattan, and he could tell you by the glimmer of light. See that little glimmer? By the glimmer of light off of the drink, he could tell how much water you added and if it wasn't enough. A Manhattan will glimmer as, it sh as it's strained, which could be too much water, but without that glimmer, it's definitely not enough water. So what we wanted was about an ounce, ounce and a half, okay? I like an orange twist, but traditionally, it is a cherry. I'm gonna do an orange twist today. Just a touch with a Swiss peeler, just a touch. Don't want to go crazy, just want to see it shimmer over. You aim it at the glass, kind of pinch it, just whoop, and you'll get just enough oil, then you drop it in just like that. Okay, I think our martini's probably done. Strain it in the glass. By the way, guys, when you strain low and slow, you don't want any bubbles on this. You want it to be like Lake Placid, okay? You want it to be calm, you don't want any bubbles nothing to disturb the beautiful texture that you just work to get with the booze, okay? All right, lemon peel 
on my martini. You could go olives, you could go both. I actually prefer both sometimes. The lemon peel really brightens up the drink. I'm gonna drop that in. So here you have it, the Manhattan. And a martini and an iced martini glass. Probably the finest way to serve a martini. Just like that. Oh, you see that little cube stick? That's why we didn't put the liquid nitrogen in too long. There you go. And the, and the guest is gonna enjoy a cold martini the entire time they drink it, which I think is essential. And when it comes to the Manhattan, it can get a little bit warmer. That's why we didn't put it in the ice martini glass, but if you wanted to, I think it's brilliant. That's it, these two drinks, guys. This is a good night for me. To better drinks, guys, as always, have a fantastic night. Love you, mean it. Bye, guys. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching the video, and as always, gotta give some props and love to Reliable Tavern, my employer for the last four years where I've been running the bar, and these guys are what make these videos possible. If you like these videos, and you want them to keep on rolling, I appreciate the support. You hit me with a like, subscribe button over here, or some video recommendations over here, all of which will keep these coming. I appreciate you guys. And, like always, to better drinks, Nux, Beer Mug, Daiquiri. Love you, me. Hey.